It is Rigo Murillo, and we are back for another Contagious Leadership Podcast. It is episode 61, and today we have a special guest, Jeremy Berg. So I'm excited to introduce him to you guys. But here's the thing that I'm really pumped about. We spend a lot of time talking about entrepreneurship. We talk a lot about how small business owners and all the different folks that are creating right now can be better within the leadership aspect. But guess what? There are tons of unsung heroes out there who are creating, developing, spending lots of energy, time and money and and resources into becoming better leaders, growing teams, and they're called intrapreneurs. And that's what I'm excited about today is introducing one to you. And we're going to get into his story. I'll be back in 30 and introduce Jeremy to you. All right, Jeremy, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Rigo. Absolutely. So a little round of applause from our uh, studio audience. Wow. A lot more people here than I expected. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, the power of technology. But I'm really excited about this concept of intrapreneurship. And, you know, I thought about this quite a bit. And if it wasn't for the opportunities that I had working within corporate America, working in these different organizations and companies, I would have never been able to learn the things, learn the skills, and really have the opportunities to continue to grow as a leader in my own field to eventually move out and become a small business owner. Now, I don't think small businesses are for everybody. And the word entrepreneur, I think has really been thrown around as more of a, you know, a a popular word. It's become a a hip Mm -hmm. word. And I think we've really forgotten about the work that is required to get here. And I think your story really represents that. So if you can, Jeremy, share us, like share a little bit about your story with us and and let's, let's share it with our, with our audience. Sure. Um, Well, thank you for the intro. I appreciate it and uh, for giving me the time here uh, to talk to you and your audience, Um, share a little bit about myself. My parents were are some of the hardest workers I've ever known. My my father's a super hard worker. He's uh, a general contractor, painter, uh, still to this day, over 80 years old, um, still out there painting uh, houses and decks and things like that. He's he's nuts. But uh, so I think um, it definitely helped me uh, and motivate me to, you know, I think in two ways to see his work ethic and to uh, to emulate that in some way. But I also uh, learned what not to do in terms of, um, you know, he was never really great with money, right? He, he, he always worked hard, but had to work hard to, in order to, you know, work every hour to make make money for himself. And and I, I always thought that if, if I was smart and I played my cards right, I could use my brains to maybe go beyond that a little bit and, um, and, and be able to earn more than, than what I can uh, provide each hour. So, um, so I took that, uh, played college basketball, which I think uh, sports has taught me a lot about work ethic and uh, getting along as a team and helping to build things and um, had a lot of great leaders growing up there. Um, and then after school, um, you know, was going to go into computer graphics because I was I was good at that stuff and almost went to ESPN, but they were on a hiring freeze at the time after I got out of school. So my friends always said I was good at sales or good with people, so I should go into sales. And uh, I started um, with a company called Horizon Foods, uh, selling gourmet foods door to door, business to business. The amount of experience you get when you are doing literal door to door sales right? There is something to be said about that. There is, um, there's a lot of sales roles and sales positions out there that will either break you or make you. That is uh, absolutely for sure. But one of the things that I really loved about your background in each of the places that you worked, you grew rapidly. Okay. So you, you moved up the chain very quickly. You would change careers and then you would move up again. 
And so in the current position that you are in, you started off in a sales role. And within a few years, you're now the president of North America within this organization today. Tell us a little bit about that company and what you do. And, and then I wanna, I wanna ask you a couple questions about that. So, I mean, I was uh, it's grateful to be in this position. I, I did start in a sales role and uh, we did um, uh, the, my mentor who, who uh, basically brought me into this industry and helped coach me. Um, ended up moving back to Germany where our headquarters is and becoming the CEO. And um, so we did a bit of a reorg there. Um, and initially I did not have any interest in moving toward the management role because I enjoyed the sales part of things, but um, the initial reorg wasn't a great fit for us. And, and so um, even though initially I said no to the management side, uh, when we had to do a reorg again, I was I decided, you know, why not? I mean, I'm, I'm at the top of where I could be on the sales side of things. Um, I can't guarantee I'm going to be any good at this, but uh, I can guarantee I'll work hard at it. And, and I think uh, I think overall it's it's been a good fit, um, and that's uh, helped to drive me up toward where I am now. I just I always try and focus on what's best for the business, and I think the the leaders have have seen that. I think that's one of the reasons why it, it was some advice I got you know back in the day that don't just focus on yourself, focus on what kind of value you can bring for the for the company and for the industry. And that has, you know, I, I think that resonates with the leadership and, and has helped to uh, drive me forward. And so that's what I want to talk about. When you become a, a, a leader, right? Leaders cannot be in a position very long and they can't be there successfully if the team is not behind them. They have to have, they have to have people that that are believing in their goal, right? Mm -hmm. Like we we have to understand how to inspire not only ourselves, but how to inspire others to rally around that vision that we have. And I think a lot of times this is overlooked. This is overlooked and there are some incredible entrepreneurs out there in the world that have done amazing things with organizations. You know, uh, there, there's so many different examples, but you know, we see a lot of faces, right? We we know, we know that. Like, you look at Disney itself, and you look at Walt Disney, but very few people knew that his brother, right, was the guy behind the scenes, really making things happen. And the list goes on. You look at Apple. You look at so many others. The Elon Musk of the world. They don't come around very often, right? No, they do not. You know, as a leader and as somebody that was growing, tell me about that that journey, like. At, you were you were working in a sales position, but what sacrifices did you make? You didn't just get chosen. Hey, Jeremy, let's put you in a presidential position, right? I'm going to move you into president of a company because you were good at sales. Right. Like, wh what did you do? What were the things that you said? I want to grow. I want to. I want to do more than just be an employee. And did you, as a second part of the question, did you go and make? your own choices to do things on your own to grow? Or did you wait for the company to push every level of growth on you? So I guess in the sales role, it was my responsibility to grow uh, my specific region or you know, territory, right? But uh, but I was always uh, never afraid to go out there. I mean, I think from the door-to-door -door business to business thing, never afraid to go out and have conversations with fresh new people and, and not just look for what the, the potential avenue is uh, for my territory, but also uh, helping to expand others, right? I, I, I sincerely enjoy other people's successes as well, um, not just my own. So if I found a route uh, or say a customer venture where I was, uh, they had projects uh, overseas um, or maybe in a different territory other than mine, I would always explore that with them. Um, and always focused on the customer too, right? Because in the end, it's all down to them. So I, I would focus on their needs. And if I found that we had a potential solution for them that was outside my realm, I would definitely make the introduction and pass that along. And I think uh, helping to make others successful is is how you get yours as well. And the, the leaders that just uh, focus on how they can succeed and taking all the credit for themselves are the ones that don't have people who follow them for very long. You know, uh, a lot of times we're, and we know this, if, if, you've, if you've built businesses, which you have, mm -hmm. and you, you've done this for an, enough time, you know, we're never defined when things go well, right? We're really defined when things go wrong. That, that's really when we're made. Give us some moments and what did you do when 
Like, how did you pull through this? How can we share this right now with another leader who's in a current situation, who's trying to build a team? And as you were stepping in, tell us about some of your failures, Jeremy. What didn't go well and how did you pull through and how did you get your team to, to go in it? And by the way, welcome, Lorianne. Glad you're here, hon. Did you start hey, without me? <laughs> yeah, we, we started without you. Yeah, sorry, but I'll tell you what. I don't know if the audience liked it, so I'm sure they're all coming back now. Yeah, now they're here. You know, so we should we start over? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jeremy. Hi, Lorianne. Hashtag so welcome back. <laughs> let's talk about my failures. Yeah, let's let's talk about let's talk about your failures. I love it because I right. think that's right. That's where we grow. Yeah, oh. absolutely. And I think uh, in terms of failures, I mean, I've had you know many um, over the years. There's lots of uh, balls that I've dropped when I should have been carrying them. Um, I think I try to to juggle too many things at once. Um, and, uh, you know, I think we all do that sometimes. And, and so I've dropped the ball on certain things. Um, uh, I know the, the global supply chain, you know, crisis was a big issue for, for my company over the past year for everyone in our industry uh, and many industries, but especially those that deal with electronic components. So it's definitely mentally challenging and uh, times when you have to shift from trying to sell things actively um, to just managing and putting out fires, right? Um, most of the conversations we had with customers were uh, full escalations, um, you know, up to the top level. For our audience and the people who are listening, like, can you just like, like walk us through, like, you dropped a ball. What is your thought process and like, how do you repair that? Especially like if it's a, if it's a relationship, you know, yeah. with a customer, with, you know, like um, a significant other, with family, like mm -hmm. you've dropped the ball and it's like, what do you, what's the first thing that you do? Uh, feel embarrassed. Uh, <laughs> think about what I should do better next time. But then you have to take you have to take accountability, right? Um, you have to you know, step up, and I think the sincerity really helps when you're dealing with customers. Um, you know, listen, I'm I'm really sorry. You know, this is something that fell through the cracks. Um, you know, I know that this must have been tough for you. Understand their situation, how it related to, and how it affected them, and then see what you can do to figure out how to uh, how to get that back, how to how to repair it. Um, if there is anything that you can do. Um, so obviously you can't uh, rewind time, but maybe you can um, you know, eat some of the expedition fees to get the, the product there faster so that it doesn't uh, keep their line down for too long. So when you like notice like, like okay, like I've dropped a ball, do you ever like um, have like this discussion with your team? Like, okay, like here's what happened. You know, I always say to, say to you know, like my clients, you know, we always hear, don't move forward while looking through the rear view mirror. But I mm. actually believe, you know, we should be looking through the rear view mirror so that we don't keep making the same mistakes, you know, over and over again. Or, you know, like it's a great way to notice patterns, you know, like, is there like a sort of like a glitch in uh, in the system, like with ordering or something, or somebody in your office? Like, is, is there anything that you do? Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll definitely have a, a powwow over things and uh, and discuss. Well, okay, you know, where did this issue go wrong? Right? Is there anything we can make more efficient in our processes so that we can either automate this this one part to make uh, you know to reduce the chances of this happening again in the future? Um, or is there any any task that maybe maybe I'm overloaded in a certain area and there's other people that have more bandwidth and maybe this falls within their uh, you know maybe it's something that they're better at anyway so um, we can uh, was, we have adjusted tasks in the past to uh, to level the playing field in terms of who who's in charge of what and uh, to try and reduce those errors again. I like that a lot. And the other thing that I wanted to sort of touch on was the accountability part where um, you know, like, you're right, like to take accountability, but I like, I, I know you and I know the kind of person that you are. And I know that you have great relation, like relationship building is one of your strong points. And so you, you, you having, you know, built some great relationships, I'm sure with customers. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that that helps when you let, when you have to pick up the phone and say, Hey, here's what happened. You know, can, can, can you speak more on that? Because I think a lot of a lot of people would benefit from understanding and really tapping into the power of relationships. Yeah, I mean, relationships are key. Uh, one thing that one phrase that comes to mind often is never give people a reason not to trust you. Right. And I think, uh, you know, being sincere with them, focusing, figuring out what their needs are uh, and trying to you know, make things happen so that you're you're meeting a need for them. 
um, you know, tends to build up, a, I don't know, the karma meter, you know, some would say. Um, and you can do that in any relationship, but you know, it, it goes a long way for customers as well. You know, personal relationships, customer relationships, you constantly try and build value and do what's right by them. And then it gives you some, I think, leeway for if you do accidentally mess up, you know, there's, you're, you're constantly adding to the bank. Uh, so sometimes when you, when you take something away by accident or uh, there's some leeway there. Nice, thank you. So, all right, let, let's move on from the faux pas area into the an, er, an area that I know that you're really good in, and that is strategy. And I think, you know, and you and I have, you know, like we work out, you know, every once in a while, and we, we you know, like you and I have had some great conversations about, because I'm always asking you like, so tell me about your interview, and <laughs> to, you know, like, tell me about your team. And so I'm like, I'm, I'm curious, like, like, let's just talk about your strategy for growing your team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, and, and thank you for always being uh, there for me to bounce ideas off of. It's, it's excellent working with uh, someone of your, working out with somebody of your caliber in the morning. So not only are, are we getting uh, stronger, you know, physically, but, you know, mentally as well. So yeah, we, we love her too, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but strategy, I don't know. I mean, I, I always, you know, I think it's always important to try and see things on, on different levels, right? Um, from the macro to the micro. So um, you can get lost in the weeds sometimes if you, uh, you know, the daily tasks and the emails and everything else that, that uh, w which is everyone piling tasks onto us, right? That's all email is and, and it can overwhelm you and drown a lot of people. But um, you have to figure out what is feasible, where you can delegate um, and step back every once in a while and say, you know, is there something else that you can be fo focusing your time on that uh, that will better be better suited to help drive us in the direction that we want to go? Um, so I think it's, it's necessary to zoom in and zoom out um, as often as you can because we can get lost in the zoomed in section of everything, of our relationships, of our workflow, of um, of our business. Um, so, in order to, I think, really drive things forward as a company, you have to be able to zoom out. I don't know if that answers your question. I think it does, but again, because I know you, I know yeah. that there's so much stuff that you do outside of the office that I know that contributes to your performance, um, your your career success. You know, because you're listening to podcasts, you're having interesting conversations, you know, like you're coaching. That's what I want to get into right there, Lori. And you brought up some good stuff where you talk about podcasts and everything else. I think sometimes we we forget just how valuable these types of things are. And so like what Lori Ann's getting into and you were saying, Jeremy, how you pull yourself out. T tell us how you do that. Like, give me what a regular day looks like. You've got... You've got a good number of employees, right? Are you okay to share? Would you be willing to share how many employees you yes. manage today? Actually, in, in the U.S., we're a fairly small team. Um, our, we're headquartered in Germany. Here, we have 11 people total. So that you have 11 our, in you have 11 in the U.S. and you work with a European team. And how many are part of the organization as a whole? Uh, we have 350 people total. So okay, uh, I am involved in the uh, so basically I'm I'm in charge of the North American operations and our our P and L here and and uh, you know sales and order processing and um, managing the uh, applications engineering team everything like that. But I also do have frequent conversations um, on overall strategy with the, the owner of the company and our headquarters in Germany. So, you know, what, one of the things that I have seen a lot of, and you shared this in your story as you're coming in, but hardworking parents, mm. okay? Like a lot of us have had that, but broke hardworking parents, <laughs> right? No. So there's no. something there where we're like, I want to do better, right? But we have to educate ourselves. I want to work hard, but I don't want to kill myself working hard. Um, I like that uh, I can solve problems, but how do I help other people solve problems? And you made a comment in regards to, listen, if I can't help that person, I'm going to bring them to where they can. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about this. Was this a culture aspect in the organizations you worked for that was already there? Or was this something that you had to help really build within these groups because that's not always you know it, it i mean it's a it's the right thing to do but it doesn't always help the bottom line so talk no. to me about those cultural aspects of the organization how did you help develop that and help people see the importance of it good question um i really i'm trying to pinpoint where i learned that i uh, 
I think I did it with the food situation as well, because I know, so basically every customer is not your customer, right? You don't have something that can fit everybody's needs. Wait, what? And, what? <laughs> are you, are you, you saying, are you saying Jeremy, are you back. saying right now that not everybody loves this face right here? No, every, I mean, there's exceptions, obviously. You know? Okay, all right. I just yeah. want to make sure we're clear. We're clear on that. I, maybe I should, I should clarify. <laughs> I don't have something that can fit everybody's needs. You know? um, and, <laughs> you're good, you're good. <laughs> and, and so, you know, either way, when you talk to some people, you realize at some point or another, right, through the qualification or disqualification process, whether or not the odds are good that you're going to work with them or not, right? If you know that the odds are not good that you're going to work with them, and you understand, maybe maybe if it's a competitor or somebody else, uh, you understand what could help them, why not just give the name out? I mean, it's they're not going to be yours anyway. It helps them save some time and energy in order to figure out their, their situation. And it builds a little bit, it adds to that karma bank that I was talking about earlier. It builds a little level of trust that maybe ends up coming back your way at some point or another. That comes down to the relationships yeah, again. Yeah, I, I think, I, I mean, think you know, what goes around comes around. I think it does go a long way. It goes a long, it goes a long way because in, in a, in building trust, being willing to say, listen, I'm not, I'm not the right answer. I'm not the right solution for you. Uh, it does. It goes, it goes a long way because sure. one day, one day you will, we, we, I'll give you an example. We had a, a new customer start with us yesterday. And it was quite exciting because I've known this gentleman for a few years. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, <laughs> came great. But one of the things that our business uh, focuses on is organic inbound leads mm -hmm. so i have i have done sales for a long time and i love sales i absolutely love it and i can be very strategic and kind of pushy sort of that's not mm -hmm. really my style i know there's a method to it i understand the closing process like i know the strategy and how you can do it i would rather get people to call me that's right. just my style so when i started to learn that there was an actual name for it Right. Then that was really exciting for us. And the one thing I found, though, is you have to have an enormous amount of patience. Like you have to build over time, over a long period of time, the understanding that when they are ready, they're going to come to you. Now, you know, with leadership, I'm finding more and more that there's a lot of similarities in sales. And here's what's really interesting, and I'm, I'm, I wanna ask a lot about this from you because it's interesting how many things in life align perfectly with what we learn in that in B2B sales. And you're in B2B sales, correct, Jeremy? Yes. And yes. it's interesting when you do that, right? Now, I'm not saying that you won't learn these lessons in that B2C, for those of you who don't understand, it's business to consumer or business to business. But in that B2B, you're not always the only solution. And that's the other thing. You may be the best, you may not be. You're gonna have to check off a few boxes. Then it comes down to one thing. It's do they trust that you're the right partner for them? So in the leadership aspect, with your, with your team members, what I would like to find out is how do you deal with conflict? When you have a team member with such a, uh, with such a, an intimate team, what happens when one of them doesn't agree with your vision? You know, that's, I, that's something I definitely need work on. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you go? Listen, it's happening. Uh, I'm, I'm not one to just drive my opinion down other people's throats. So, um, you know, we extend the conversation, right? We, we typically uh, make it a longer thing. We And I try and get them to some, sometimes step out and, and uh, get a broader view, right? Rather than some, uh, I think some of us and, uh, you know, and some of my, um, you know, teammates here, tend to get stuck in the weeds. So I uh, try and draw them out to the, the next step. You know, I totally understand what you're talking about here, but let's take a step back. How does that affect the customer? How does that affect the company as a whole? Um, you know, and we have to make sure there's a win here all the way around, not just for one person, right? If, you, if us making this change the way you want it, uh, it's good for you. That's cool, but imagine how much work it's going to add add to this person or or this person. So we have to figure out what makes the most sense. What what I want to know now is is how do you rally them? 
When you need to get a sprint, like talk to me about how you deal with things strategically with an organization of your size, doing the things you're doing. You're doing really big things with a small group in terms of what you're producing. And you're in a very, very competitive market, very competitive market. How do you get the team to rally around the necessary sprints that you have to do in order to hit numbers when you have to hit them? Yeah, I mean, uh, sometimes it can be tricky, right? You know, not everybody is, uh, um, I guess, numbers based. You can you can put some KPIs in order and and some incentive programs around it, and for some people that works, you know, but not everybody. So you gotta you gotta understand your audience, um, and, and if you've built enough uh, in that karma bank, you can maybe pull from it and be like, guys, really, this is something that we we need to get done to to hit uh, our targets for the year. Um, I don't really put too much uh, uh, burden on. I try not to put too much burden on their shoulders because I take on so much and you know, try to delegate you know some things, but probably not enough. Yeah, that brings um, up a good question. But at some point, hey. you, know, you got to ask them to really step up and, and help. Yeah. Right? Well, Jeremy, that leads yeah. us right into kind of another question I have: delegation, <laughs> right? Yeah. So listen, I I love this. Um, and I'm really, really glad that that um, that you're 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 game to this, and I appreciate it. Again, I want to thank you for being here. Real quick, hey, listen, uh, if you have not already started following us, please do me a favor. If any of what we're bringing you is bringing you value, do me a favor, get on, follow. You could also join our community by uh, texting. I've got the private chat in the way, and for some reason, I have forgotten. How Text my number works. Lunch, there it is. Two, there three, it is. One, lunch. Six, seven, nine, nine, eight, zero, five, <laughs> Thank two. you. I have too many monitors going. But yeah, do us a favor. Text uh, lunch to uh, 316 799 8052. That goes right to our community app. Okay. This is not a spam app. I promise you. I hate spam. And half the times I forget to even tell you what's going on. But we, we really, really want you to join our community here because. This is a great way for us to communicate with you. Let us know what's, you know, let you guys know what's happening. Our next guest, ask uh, if there's things that you're interested in. We usually maybe text once, maybe twice a week. I promise you, we don't even know your number. So everything is safe. Please join our communities. That way we can, um, we can stay in touch with you and you can let us know what you think. Also, again, follow us, follow our page, follow Lori Ann. Uh, make sure to please, uh, uh, like, again, if you have value in this, you can follow me. Donnie, why don't you show them the little video on how easy it is to go in and follow somebody because some people seem to have a difficult time with this. So if you uh, uh, do, uh, I can't when you're remote. Okay. <laughs> so well, we learned onto, something else. Onto delegation. Uh, all right. So let's talk about, let's talk about delegation. All right. Okay. So. In, in an organization, because what's delegation that? delegation can be hard for people. Yes. This is one of the things that I, that, I, that I know, like, from my days of, you know, when I was, you know, coaching a lot of high-level leaders, is that it's almost like, you know, like, we get this job out of, out of high school, and we're doing this job, and then you get a promotion, and, like, nobody ever teaches people how to delegate to their team. It's like now you're, you're leading a group of people, but you're still, you're still like, I'm still going to do all these things because... I mean, you kind of said it earlier. You like you didn't want to give it on to your team. You you're carrying a lot of the burden. So right. yeah, let's talk a little bit more about the art of delegation. Plus, you know, you know, if if you can do it and it's something you're good at, you know, you you know you're going to get it done, and you trust yourself. And you know, sometimes you're not sure how how much uh, weight the team is already carrying, and you don't want to put uh, too much burden or, or make your team burn out, right? Well, so, yeah. But at what point do you do you like do you teach them? Do you take the time? Because whenever you're teaching, you know, a new skill to your to your team, I mean, it does take time. Mm -hmm. I mean, but at what point do you say like, okay, I'm willing to put in this extra time, knowing it's going to save me and also the team in the long run, and it's also really good for you know you know company engagement. True. Yeah. Agreed. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely something I, I struggle with. But um, you know, in the past, I have just had conversations with people. You know, especially if I know it's something that's up their alley in terms of their skill set. Um, uh, I try and get a, a, a read on what their workload is, and and uh, if we can fit this into the workflow, you know, I'll ask them to to take it on. But 
Um, I don't do that enough, probably. <laughs> I was just going to say, so, should, we, should we turn this into a coaching session? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe we're all just going to sit here and coach ourselves. But <laughs> one of the things that I have found is the importance of, of getting a couple cheerleaders and some flag carriers. You're not, you are not able to influence everyone alone, right? Because right. these little silos happen no matter what. You're going to have little segues of groups and they're going to kind of rally around. And if you're not careful, you can get some mutiny happening. You know, and so you have to have flag carriers, mm -hmm. and there has to be people that 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 are in your that are in your 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 top line, and those are the ones that you work with that help really challenge you, right? They, mm -hmm. You give you give them permission because you need that you need that 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 check and balance wall. So you've given them permission to challenge you, right? And so how how do you build them up? How do you continue to get them to 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 carry that that same flag, uh, to, you know, throughout throughout the rest of the organization. Right. Good call. I mean, there's definitely those people that you know um, uh, can get involved on the strategy part of things, and you trust. You know, there's certain people you really trust their thought and input uh, on your team, and those are the uh, the ones that I think you want to recruit to be your flag carriers. So, I love um, it. Yeah. And because you know they hold influence on the rest of the team as well because of their knowledge and because of how they treat people. So, yep. um, you know, really everybody just wants to be treated with some respect. And I think if you do that and you and you help to figure out what their strengths are and, and uh, you know, put tasks in line with what their strengths are, um, it, it, you help them succeed, right? Um, you try not to set people up for failure by overloading them with things that you know they're probably are not in their wheelhouse. All right, so um, I think what, one last big one that I want to ask, and, and then I'll, I'll let Lorianne talk. Maybe really? if she showed up on really? time. <laughs> yeah, maybe if you showed up on time, Lorianne. Showed up on time. Yeah, no, I'm giving first. you a hard time. No, listen, I like Jeremy. Sorry, you introduced <laughs> us, and I'm having fun, okay? Well, so, uh, yeah. So, Go ahead, ask. Ask a question. Okay, I will. <laughs> so, no, seriously, as I, I, what I'm thinking here is is when you're looking at um, you're looking at other young up and coming, you know, uh, uh, young people, uh, 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 men and women that are that are entering into the workforce. They're they're really coming into a place where they can start really offering value. And again, I told you, there's the big buzzword, mm -hmm. the entrepreneur. Like I'm all about side hustles. I think everybody should have one personally. I think it's great because number one, I think it keeps you out of trouble. Number two, it teaches you skills and you can make a little extra money. And that way as an employer, myself, I don't have to be your only source of income. <laughs> like I like that, okay? I like the idea of side hustles. Um, I, I've, I, I promote that internally within our organization. By all means, if you have a small business or you have an idea or concept, do it, build it. Like I love the idea. If we can help you, let us help you. Learn from what we're doing. If it interferes, we may have an issue, but just be open and honest about it and we'll, we'll, we'll talk through it. As an entrepreneur, I like that. Again, I think it's a buzzword. You right now, talk to those young people in their mid 20s and they're coming into the 30s and they're thinking that the only way for them to build, create and really do something powerful is they have to do it on their own. I don't think that's the case. I know I did, but I think entrepreneurship is a powerful, powerful position if people understand it. So talk to them on what can they do and, and what is the 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 advantages of what you've been able to do in the internal aspect of being, I mean, you have an entrepreneurial role. You do, mm -hmm. you're building and you're creating, you're just doing it internally. Talk right. to them about that. What can they do to start growing in their organization and to become better in themselves and for the organizations they work for? Uh, yeah, great question. Um, so yeah, I mean, entrepreneurship is sexy, but it's not for everybody, right? Um, it, you know, putting all the risk on your shoulders is something that uh, you know definitely isn't for everybody. It's a um, uh, listen to Gary Vaynerchuk's uh, you know talk on that, uh, and also you can check out the book uh, The E Myth Revisited, which talks about entrepreneurship is what the E Myth um, is and how everyone thinks it's sexy, and, and it breaks down why it potentially isn't for everybody. Um, but in terms of being in entrepreneur you know being uh, being able to grow within a company and build value there 
Um, I, you know, we hit on some of the things previously, but you know, just figure out, you know, know your role, but also have a vision for, you know, uh, what what else is available in terms of the company. What does your business do? What uh, what's your specific role? Is there anything you can do to help build more, more value for the company? Are there process efficiencies that you can help do? And just sitting there and and um, I think talking trash about the current uh, situation and how the the um, maybe the processes or some of your colleagues. There's a lot of people that just like to talk uh, trash about things, but don't come with any kind of solution. Um, so if you're going to downplay something that maybe isn't working, because every organization can can make improvements, but if you're going to come and talk negatively about how things are not working, maybe have a couple of potential solutions that um, that might be able to uh, fix the problem and not just fix it for you, but also make everybody's job a little bit easier. So. Um, I would say those are some things you can focus on. Um, you know, it's really just finding out how you can build value for the organization. And you know, the, another cliche that uh, that I'm not against is the rising tide floats all ships, right? Um, you know, you help others succeed. You figure out how to uh, make things, you know, overall run smoother. You're gonna, you know, people are gonna take notice, and you're gonna work your way up through the ranks. I completely I love agree it. with those. Listen, Jeremy, awesome. Very, very good words of wisdom. Thank you so much for sharing those uh, with everybody. And I thought you are a great sport and a wonderful guest. I really do appreciate having you here. Um, Lorianne, I'm going to give you the opportunity here to have a, a few, uh, some final words with Jeremy. A, a few, and a few see, minutes? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe a few seconds. We'll see. I'll count them down. <laughs> okay, thanks. I, I love it. I love the advice that you just gave, Jeremy, because I do think that being, you know, having solutions, being a problem solver, but also, you know, just being very observant around not only in your organization, but also in your industry or even in neighboring industries to see like, you know, like what's going on outside of our organization. What are some of the trends that are, that are happening so that it just really helps you within, you know, to have your entrepreneurship like within an organization. But I also think, you know, it's just like, it's knowing yourself, knowing your skills, knowing like, what are you good at and what are you really interested in mm -hmm. instead of having a boss say, well, but this is what I need you to do. Right. You know, especially when there are other skills that I would like to develop, I would like to investigate. True, good point. Yeah, and uh, you know, that's one thing maybe we didn't uh, talk about is is working on yourself, right? If uh, if you don't understand your your own, um, you know, where your strengths and your weaknesses are, and you don't work on your weaknesses, you know, it's hard to grow. You know, there too, you have to you have to really respect and uh, you know, focus on yourself as well as you know, others in the organization. Because if, if you're only focused externally, you're probably not getting enough sleep, you're probably not you know, uh, getting the right nutrition, you're gonna have brain fog, you're not gonna be that effective. So uh, you definitely have to work on yourself as well. Yeah, I agree. I was just that, gonna say that's yoga. The one, that's the struggle, <laughs> that's the one I got. That, that's the one I got. I'm like, I'm trying, kind of, but yeah, not really. One of the things I've learned, I've I've learned recently is, um, uh, uh, you you will you will you will do what you need to do, no matter like you have time or not, like where you find your value. And so True. a lot of times it's it's tough. I'm there as well. When someone says I don't have time, it's like no, you don't you don't have value for it. Let's be True. honest. You don't have value for it because yeah. if if I was um, if I was diagnosed with something terrible, and that required me to have a particular diet, and all of a sudden I had to make a certain scheduled time for myself, whether it be uh, 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 working out or nutrition or seeing a doctor, guess what? I all of a sudden have time for it. <laughs> Yeah, true. The, right? the thing you need the, the most. Thing, the thing I need. So it's 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 about value, and I I think that's what we really need to be. I just personally think as leaders, I think we need to be more honest with ourselves on that. Is we we have not put it into the value of where it needs to be, and and that's really what it, it comes down to. Because I I think we're always going to have to shift around, and there's going to be times we have to work really hard, and there's times we may not be able to have the best diet on the planet, but then there's times we can. And you talked about your bank. I think that goes with everything. That goes emotionally, spiritually, in your body. That goes in your finances. It's like you always want to build and store up as much as we can, right? Because you're not always going to have 
uh, feast, sometimes there's famine, right? And you gotta, you gotta be ready for it. So anyways, Jeremy, awesome, man. Loved having you here. Thanks, Thank you Jeremy. so much. Thank you very yeah, much. For appreciate I appreciate it. it. So hold tight. We're going to pull you off for real quick. Donnie, go ahead. But I want to let everybody know we are really, really happy that you guys are here for another episode. Hey, whoa, bring Lorianne back. Yeah. <laughs> Donnie, you can have a conversation with him after, Lorianne. Listen, we are grateful that you're here. We have a just a ton of great shows lined up for the rest of the year, and we're excited about that. If you want to know more about Jeremy Berg and just kind of following him, by all means, we will drop his information within the chat if you haven't already seen it in the uh, 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 the, the event itself, but by all means, connect with them. Let them know what your thoughts are. Um, if you like this program, if you like the value we bring you, again, we ask that you continue to uh, to do so by by following, by sharing, by letting other people know, um, and uh, join us uh, next week. We have a lot of great stuff coming up. We're excited about it, and we have a lot of great news coming up. Both Lorianne and I have some cool things we're going to be filling you guys in on. But anyways, that is it from my secret headquarters. Lorianne, are you good? Yes, I'm good. And I'm excited for next week's show. Yeah, it's we, going to be it's, cool. It's Terry. Terry. Yep, Terry Rice. Terry yep, Rice. Terry Rice. Yes. So uh, uh, really so pumped about that. definitely want to be here. Yep. You guys definitely want to uh, see it and you don't want to miss it. So anyways, thank you very much. We'll be here again next Thursday, 1 p.m. Central Time. God bless. Be safe. And we will talk to you later. Donnie, get us out.